you are live. There we go. Okay, we will call the meeting to order. Um, we'll start with a pledge and then we'll go to a roll call. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice all right. Okay, let's start by doing a more formal roll call this time. Um, Carl Bonamico. Here. Mike Berenci, that's me. Blake Fishbein. Here. Rob Fritz. Absent. Mike Glidden. Here. Bob Gross. Here. Jacqueline McNamee. Here. Chris Regan. Here. Jesse Reynolds. Here. Amy Walsh. Here. Okay. I'm done with that. Um, are there any recusals tonight? Um, I think there's a couple, but let's let's get them out. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to recuse myself from Barans. Okay. Mike Little is recusing. From Lorenz. Okay. And I am recusing from Academy Dicatelli. And Carl is recusing from Academy Dicatelli. Any other recusals? No? Okay. There are. There are no updates at this point. Um, maybe the end of the meeting there will be, but not now. So we'll go right to the applications. And we will follow the same format. And I'm going to repeat this a lot at every meeting because not everyone watches the video, not everyone comes to the same meeting. And so what uh, we have decided to do is someone will open the discussion and for uh, tonight and tomorrow that'll be me and then we go around the table twice if need be everyone weighs in and we have a discussion then it's come time comes time to vote we all have score sheets which contains a matrix that was um, passed and approved by the town council so we score those According to our sheets, we pass them in. Um, Jesse's going to run the adding machine, uh, take an average. Uh, Amy is going to collect the scoring sheets, put them in the envelope, and mark on. And that's how we're going to go about it. I'm going to leave my computer and hand it. I gave them. Mike, do you want to read it? it? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, um, you didn't mention the, the bar, 70 and above. And yeah, we should repeat that. Yeah, we should repeat that. So in the case of business applications, to get a recommendation by the committee for a grant requires 70 points or more, 69 or below is a non-recommendation. That covers yes, sir. Okay, so thank you for that. So the first one on the agenda, Is Archie Moore's restaurant? You want to Baron? You want to Baron? Let's see. Oh, thank you. Uh, Baron, let's. Uh, sure. We're going to do you first. Stay there and we'll go here with Baron. Okay. So, and Baron, here's, here's what I see. Uh, Baron's. Uh, Kempo Karate LLC. I hope I'm pronouncing everything right. Um, they're on 21 North Plains Industrial Road. It is a, um, a martial arts instruction business, uh, teaching life skills to men, women, and children of all ages. Their application says, uh, with respect to the uh, negative impact of COVID, um, I'm not reading everything. The application speaks for itself, but reading enough so that if someone is watching the world, on the applicant um, those that we're covering some of the facts here. They say they uh, lost just over 30% of their students and at this time have 
still not recovered um, back to student enrollment pre-COVID. Um, skipping a bit, the grant would be used to replace the karate specialized maths, which costs in excess of 10,000 and marketing to increase enrollment. That's not everything they say, but that's um, the number of it. Going through the application, what um, I see is significant. Um, they received uh, PPP money, paycheck protection money, I'm rounding this at about $140,000. Uh, there is a, um, a listing of how they would use the requested funds. They requested $25,000 math, equipment, and marketing uh, costs. With respect to the uh, financials, here's what I see there. The um, the gross in 2019 uh, reflected um, a pretty healthy business doing doing pretty well, but in 2020 the gross took a hit and it still has not recovered in 2021. Uh, it's a uh, substantial decline. The, the gross is substantial decline from three COVID levels. In 2019, pre-COVID, um, there was a, a tidy little uh, profit they had going, but in 20, 2020 and 21, uh, there were losses. There were losses for those two years in the aggregate of rounding now is about 82,000. Um, consider at this point, the paycheck protection money of about 140. So if you uh, uh, add up the losses and factor in what they got in paycheck protection, which is tax exempt, um, that put them ahead about 58,000, which is roughly where they were pre-COVID. Um, so that's some of the financials. Um, what I see as far as scoring, Uh, going down our matrix, uh, the first row was a pass fail. Um, did the proposed project, or will the proposed project address the negative impact or health, in, uh, health impacts due to COVID 19? I, I think that's a clear yes, no problem there for me uh, in any event. Um, and then the next one, uh, the degree to which the pandemic created or contributed um, to the Financial adversity, um, the way I look at the financials and the application, um, to me, that seemed pretty clear. And um, I'm going to, I'm not sure what my final scores do, but I, my tentative score is a pretty strong score on that one. Uh, the next row is a 40 pointer, which is the biggest one. Um, the degree to which it was demonstrated that the applicants proposed project will assist the business in long-term recovery. Um, the project is the match, the advertising and so on. It seems to fit in, in, in my view pretty nicely into what um, the criteria uh, is looking for with respect to a passing grade. So it's pretty strong score there. Um, going down to the next row, um, the documentation uh, was very strong. A lot of detail that was put into that. So I, I think um, it's a very strong score that I'm going to give for the documentation. And as far as the timeline, uh, there's nothing complicated about this. It doesn't depend upon um, uh, permitting or things beyond their control. So it, it, everything seems that it seems like they can do everything they need to do within 12 months. So I add up uh, my tentative score, and I have a I have a total score um, well above what would be a passing grade. So who wants to take the next swing at that? And then we'll just go in rotation from, uh, I saw, oh, I was looking in this direction. So I'll, I'll go with Chris. Go ahead, and then we'll just go around the table twice if we need to. I, I would concur with the majority of what you said as far as uh, demonstrating the need. Uh, absolutely it's there. Uh, demonstrated, you know, not a temporary fix. Uh, it's obviously it's a mix of both uh, tangible items and advertisement. The, the marketing, the mix of which is, is absolutely necessary for 
uh, for a business who has been a mainstay in, in the town to work to continue uh, and acquire any of those 30% of the customers that they lost back. Uh, the, the documentation, excellent. Uh, no question as far as that. I, I hope all of our applicants have that level uh, going forward if they don't possible. And timelines, uh, I don't know, that's really that's a good team. There's nothing on the complicated about executing on that. So very high score to me. Jesse. Yeah, same. I agree. Um, they still haven't brought back the employees that they lost pre-pandemic. Um, the, you know, the, the need, it was clearly outlined that the cleaning related to COVID actually damaged the materials, so they have to replace them. Um, uh, you know, and I, I, even even with the PPG money, you know, it's clear that, you know, sometimes being made whole isn't necessarily being made whole, especially when you've lost membership. So, yeah, I agree. Strong application, great backup material. Estimates were there for right down to the, you know, the materials themselves was really easy to uh, you know, make a choice to score this one high. Amy? Likewise, I scored high for documentation. Um, the PPP loan helped them fill the gap uh, in 2020, um, but they are seeing a drop in membership going forward. So their remedy is exactly addressing those gaps. So really good thing. Of course. No, I'll just concur with everybody. Great question. I'm glad I'm hearing what I'm hearing because, you know, I'm. <laughs> Uh, very supportive of martial arts programs and, you know, things for kids and stuff like that. And all day long I was wrestling with, is it my bias towards this business and, you know, that's skewing me. So I agree with everything that I've seen and heard. And, uh, you know, I, I scored accordingly. Thank uh, you. Uh, the first requirement, uh, clearly a pass. Uh, there's there's a level of completeness that I haven't seen in any of the applications. It's well done, a lot of effort, a lot of concentration. In terms of the degree of which it demonstrated, clearly was a negative uh, adverse impact on this industry with the shutdown. And also, there's an erosion of students here that still exists. Um, in terms of the degree of proposed budget, 15 received my high score. Um, this received a very very strong score for me. Yeah. I agree with everyone on the farm. They scored it very high. And I just wanted to add that his business is an asset to our town, especially with the mental health issues that are going around. And he provides a safe environment for kids to, you know, do all the things that I try to teach them. And he gets to uh, follow up with, yeah, the rest of the control. So I say high pass. We'll go around if you need to. Um, right. If there's something you want to add, um, just stick with one of It's coming back to me. I, I just want to point out on, on this application that they're still showing a loss. So that the, 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 the impact, the hangover, the sting of the pandemic was still there. I'm not sure my first time around I said that, but I wanted to emphasize it. So uh, we're all done. Let's pass them in. What are you ready for? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Brodinski, 86. Carl, 95. Matthew, 95. Regan, 85. Rafa, Reynolds, 97. Walt, 100. Fishbine, 75. And gross 85. Okay. 89.75. 89.75? Yeah. Well, that's by far a passing grade so that will be, yeah, be recommended. Okay. okay. Any other applicants out there? No. Okay. Did, you, did you catch what we did? Yes. Okay. All right. Now back to the agenda. And now we're starting to talk about the more. One second. You are certainly welcome to stay. Don't feel obligated to have to use it. Okay. Right here. 
On Archie Morris, uh, here's what, what can I see uh, in the application? I see a, uh, a gross sales uh, that are substantially above pre pandemic levels. Um, gross sales are so high, I, I don't even want to mention the number. Um, the net is substantially above pre pandemic levels, um, double. Um, so high on the net that I don't really want to mention that, but. Uh, and they also got uh, paycheck protection and tax exempt money of about 399000 Um We all know and love Archie's. We've all been there many times, I'm sure, and will be uh, again. Um, that's not the criteria. The, the core criteria in Wallingford's iteration of the um, ARPA grant is uh, hardship, is economic hardship, economic adversity. That's what the, the uh, core finding has to be. Is there a current present economic adversity caused by the pandemic? Um, I see from the application that the use of the money is, um, they, they say we can continue to pay down outstanding debt. I, I go to the town's uh, description of the ARPA business program and the, the grant conditions say funds may not be used for reserves lost, lost profits or payments on debt. So this is pretty simple for me. Um, Archie's that we, that we love and patronize is a, is a little gold mine, and I, I don't see any reason to conclude that there's any sort of uh, hardship. The fact that they're going to use it for debt, which is not within the scope or the, the, the vision of the town as a grant program, um, this application just doesn't work. Who wants to take the next swing? Bob Gross. Uh, I do concur, but I don't concur. Um, as reading the requirements, I failed them right off the bat when I did it in homework. But then I read the instructions. I think we just need to clear this up because what Mike had given us and what the town had given us says the general purpose of the grant is to assist in the retention and rehiring of employees, recruitment of new employees, and capital building or equipment improvement unpaid rent, mortgage, and other expenses. So I, I still think they're not eligible, but I think we need to clear up the unpaid rent issue because this is gonna come up in other applications. And I don't know if we discuss it now or later, but I agree with um, Mr. Radinsky that on the application side, their income is there. They've recovered from the pandemic. They did get their PPP money. They survived it and doing well. It looks like you look at the payouts to the owners of the company and so forth. They are greater than they were pre-pandemic. But this unpaid rent is an issue for me on this one. I mean, originally I graded to zero because of that, and then I just read the rules again and it says it there. And then it says here that it should not be unpaid rent. You shouldn't compensate for unpaid rent. Here it says you can. What is it? I'm going to Craig. We'll go around and we'll address it. Craig. So I, I, you know, I concur with everything that I've heard. You know, I guess we we have the same problem that we had last night with some applications. You know, we're paying tens of thousands of dollars to a consultant. I think it was their job to make sure whether or not this application fit the four corners of what we provided. I don't think it does, given the debt situation. That being said, even if we get through that filter, I can't tell what's going on here. So there's an entry in here that says 
uh, total cost of project programs grants specify the source of additional funds. And then it says $60,000 balance of funds have been secured. So am I to understand that the debt is 60 grand and that they have the 60 grand secured? I don't know what the total debt is here, uh, but it, it looks to me like you know, an application for 25,000, because that's the most they can get. And, you know, there's going to be spread. But there's no documentary support. I mean, there's no invoice. There's nothing, there's nothing here. So I don't know that the score sheet can accurately reflect those infirmities with the application, because I, I keep on looking at it. And it's like, okay, where do I downgrade based upon that lack of stuff? Uh, but nonetheless, I don't get to the 70. So. Right. Okay. Huh? Um, you know, you've got Markham as their accounting firm. They're world class. It's the gold standard. I'm looking at these financials. I'm dissecting them from 18, 19, 20. Very impressive financials. I don't see, um, to me, in terms of demonstrating an adverse uh, impact on this business. But matter of fact, given the situation during those three years, I see a thriving business. So to me, it's quite poor. Okay. I agree with everything that's been said so far, and I also was struggling with the, you know, the staff and employees um, maybe unemployment as well as the backlog. But the final was the better was. Um, just as a patron, wish we had more uh, detail and, and a more complete application. We do not, so I can't score this up. Mike Lindon. That this is another incomplete application. Just, um, oops, sir. No, it's not fine. Um, yeah, uh, echoing the same statements, I would have liked to have seen some details in writing other than just listing things like well, fire for rent, this for that, and the other. I mean, even if it were, I don't know what, what you would submit, whether it be passing bills or anything like that, it's just difficult for me to look at a company that. that you know, everybody struggled in the pandemic. And that's the one thing that I'll say is like every single one of these businesses was hit with a hardship. Everyone who worked for them was hit with a hardship. However, I don't know if the hardship meets the standard for which we're trying to give out these grants um, based on the financials and based on the lack of information on, as to where the money is actually going to go. I think that's kind of where I am. Amy? Yeah, my sentence fall along the lines of everyone else. Um, I struggled with the lack of specificity in the um, application. It was the one asked, you know, how does um, how is your business affected? It was general and I thought it was many different work that you many issues, many, many issues, but nothing specific you know, um, on the application. That's what was the of the application. If we, yeah, Bob, yeah, your second, your second time around. So the only thing I forgot to say in the first one is they asked for back rent. And if we propose that we're going to allow back rent to be given, how does somebody back up that they owe back rent? I'm sorry, I see you shake your head, but I'm saying that that's a real, um, if you guys decide to go that way, and that's a, and it's not for, I'm just bringing it out there, it's convoluted how to figure it out. And then we're four months past the, or by the time, because March is coming up. So these, some of these were done in November, yet December, January, February, month, four months. Have they paid off some of that debt already? Have they, has the business has improved? I mean, are we just, it's, to me, it's very difficult for the back rent to be an issue here okay. on any of them. Um, I have nothing to add. I, well, you know, I mean, it is possible to show, you know, there could be a notice to quit. There could right. be a bill. There could be, possible. you know, it, well, there should be something. Those there. documents are going to be out there, but I just, I also want to say that, you know, during the pandemic, originally restaurants were shut down, but then I think government did a lot here in Wallingford to permit, you know, the outdoor dining expansion went over the top. And, and this is, you know, I can't ignore the fact, it's not in the application, but I can't ignore the fact this is one of the entities that was able to take advantage of that, whereas not every restaurant in town could. So I can't ignore it. I've got nothing. Any, anyone else? I just want to add that I, I have many clients in the restaurant people and uh, in the restaurant industry. And I can tell you the outdoor option actually increased revenue and sales Absolutely. and to you to perpetuate that that trajectory. So and it, it now is part of their complement. So uh, I just don't see it in the financials. There's a lot of vagueness in the responses. 
And again, you just mentioned, so I just don't see this really even coming close to the threshold. Okay. But, I agree. Let it come in. Oh, no, no. Maybe the right. Or fifty. Now fifty-five. Um, five. Um, zero. Jesse Reynolds, fifty-five. Regan, zero. This um, fine, 50. Lynn, I like that better. 30. You like that better? Wall, 20. And Gross, 30. Yeah. Um, so now we're moving on to um, the Academy of the Capital Leader and Carl Rilly Cruzzi. Yes, Klein. Can I as well as each of the other things? Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, now the purpose is following a good example of what we're going to do. I'm pretty proud. I feel proud of you now. Red flags are going up. So. Academy of Capillary. Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go back um, to the, um, maybe the, the anatomy of uh, the, the, the anatomy of Wallingford's ARPA application uh, process, which is context for my for my, uh, my comments. Um, there was a time early in the process when Longford was still debating how to formulate a grant program. And it was said um, over and over um, without challenge that the point of the ARPA program was to top off your losses, replace lost revenues, um, and that if you had lost revenues or if you had uh, lost profits weren't really mentioned, but uh, if you had those sort of losses, come to the town, apply for ARPA, and uh, you can make good on those losses. When when those comments were made, they were controversial um, at best, never challenged, but um, didn't. And, and, and insofar as um, the Wallingford program, um, they were aspirational because Wallingford had not yet determined what its criteria was. So as far as the local criteria. Um, that um, um, sort of observation, that observation never made it into the local criteria, and, and it was controversial whether that those observations about top off your losses, make up your lost revenues, very controversial whether that even squared with our point, which was which is clear the federal rules that grants to businesses have to be hardship grants, have to be hardship grants, and hardship. Has a meaning, uh, adverse 
financial adversity has a meaning. And if we're going to have criteria, those words have to be given plain language meaning. And um, it is somewhat, in, in my view, of a distraction to uh, either wander away from, from those criteria because of the, of the nature of the application, you know, what it, how complete it is, so on and so forth. I also want to digress um, by way of context. Um, in the case of jury trials, as you know, I'm a retired lawyer, I did, did some litigation work. And so when the prospective jurors come to the court to hear a case, um, the judge, when the jurors sit down, the judge says, you know, ladies and gentlemen, um, the law of the case will be given to you by the judge, by the court. That's not me, by the way, that's the counsel. If there's a rough analogy, that's the counsel. The law will be given by, uh, by me, the judge. And it's your job to apply the law as I give it to you, whether or not you like it. If you don't like it and you feel you can't comply, the judge will say, raise your hand. And of course, no one raises their hand. And then as the, the beginnings of the case progress, individual jurors come and they sit down and the lawyers get to pepper them with questions. And inevitably, the lawyer says, well, if the judge says, this is the law, can you comply even though you don't agree? And of course, they say, oh yeah, I can, I can comply. So in this particular case, as I said on prior applications and will continue to say, the core criteria in Wallingford is financial adversity. That's the core criteria. And the burden of proof is on the applicant to demonstrate that. And the financial adversity has to be existing now. That is the criteria. Can't change it because we don't like it. The, the first row, the 30-point row, says that you score based on the degree to which the COVID-19 pandemic created or contributed to the demonstrated and clearly described financial adversity that the business is experiencing. So the point of uh, getting financial backup, the point of the application is to try to drill down into what's going on and discern whether or not there is a clear, you know, a present financial adversity. Um, in this particular uh, case of uh, DeCathaway, here's what I, here's what jumps out at me. Here's, here's what I see. It looks like the purpose of the uh, grants which is a $10,000 request in this case, $10,000. Almost every other grant request is 25. Um, but this is one of the few so far that we've seen where it's pared down to 10. And they say that, um, that they're gonna use the money to mitigate the cost of purchasing uh, PPE and additional desk chairs and equipment that were not originally allowed to be reimbursed through PPP. So it sounds like They've already bought this. And my question rhetorically, answered or not, as we go around the table is, okay, if we're giving 10,000 and where does the money go? It's not a future purchase as I interpret this, it's a past purchase. And then where does the money go? Well, it cannot go for reserves, lost profits or payment on debt. So we have money coming in uh, to this organization. The equipment has already been bought. And if the money is, Certainly not going to go for this. It's for, for the desks. They've already been purchased. It's not a forward-looking project. It's going to go into reserves or some other place. Um, that jumps out at me, and, I, and that's why I'm bringing it up. Um, so I'm going to go back to uh, Academy Kelly and um, talk a little bit about what they are. It's a private occupational trade school um, providing courses in cosmetology, barbering, and aesthetics. They, like so many other businesses uh, during the time of COVID, mainly in 2020, they, they had a hit. Um, they say that uh, due to the uh, state mandated closure, um, they had uh, consequences. They think that's persuasive. I, I, I think that, that's actually what happened. They say we were forced to close the salon floors. Um, again, I've, I've looked at them from the window outside when I go to a pizza place to the left, and I see these like barber chairs and and, and beauty styling uh, facilities and things like that. So this is this is what they do. Uh, but they were forced to close the salon floors to our guests and greatly limit the number of students and staff. That has 
consequences, sure. The financial picture is that um, pre-COVID, this seems to have been a robust, successful uh, business with a healthy gross, gross income. In 2020, uh, and I think that's sort of the, the, um, the peak of the pandemic, um, what we're seeing in 2020, um, the gross went down, but not dramatically. And then in 2021, the gross was back up to basically where they were pre-pandemic. So those, those numbers, um, standing along with some other numbers on the over, those numbers don't reveal to me any sort of a hardship. And, they, and they're, they're gross in 2021, very healthy. And it was a, it was a big gross, seven-figure gross. The net, um, what we have uh, in 2019, um, they had a, a you know, tidy little profit. In 2020, they barely escaped with a very small profit. So the net profit in 2020 dipped dramatically. Um, but during that year, or because of that year, they got uh, 220,000 of tax exempt uh, paycheck protection money which may have put them in a better position than they would have been if they had to earn that uh, uh, money. Um, so you, you add the paycheck protection money and the profit they did make, um, not too bad. And then in 2021, they made more net than they made pre-pandemic and the gross was about the same. So this is a company in my view that um, suffered a, uh, a hit uh, in, in 2020. They got PPP uh, money from the federal government. Uh, they bounced back and they are not on the road to recovery. I, I see a company that has recovered. So when I go to store, um, I on the first line, which is the required line, um, which is the pass fail, I'm not sure that I'm convinced I see an impact of the pandemic at this point. And every other store, because they have survived the pandemic and come back strong, got PPP money to tie them over for the temporary hit, um, because the business is successful and profitable, I think it's impossible to find a hardship. So um, with that in mind, and subject to my second bite of my apple, I will pass it on. Who wants to take a? I'll go. Dave, wait. Anybody else want to take the second swing? Well, first one. Go ahead. First one. First one. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Nobody yeah. picked yet. A um, couple things. Sure. One is on the PPP. They really received four hundred and twenty thousand three hundred and twenty dollars. So that is a check online, and if you look at their financials, it does state it in there. So that really made a difference for me for the, the year income. It's a pre, it's above pre-pandemic because of that. It's not taxable. And it's, you got to use the wages, but they're the ones receiving the wages for it. And the only thing I just want to say also is I know that you looked into it and said, well, they might have purchased this stuff previously. We they could still be ongoing and purchasing safety equipment ongoing. Um as I said here with a mask on, pandemic for some of us is still not over. And um, so they have customers and being a beauty salon, I'm sure they treat elderly people and so forth like that. But I'm sure they still buy some cleaning and, you know, a little extra. So I, I wouldn't make that, I just wouldn't make that assumption that we were grading it, but that's, other than that, I don't see how they pass either because of the, the income is there. Plus the PPP money was pretty good too. It was 420. And you can see it right now. And in the financial right out here, so great. So when I was reviewing the application, you know, originally I was like, you know, there's milk toast. Um, but then I remembered, you know, especially in this industry, there was no warning. Um, part of public health issued a decree, and these places were shut down. Um, I'm I was very happy with the humble request. I, I, that really blew me away because we have a lot of applications where you know they max out and it's like they're trying to put the money somewhere. So I was very happy with that. I mean, I, you know, and this is what we talked about this 
last week or whatever we met where we're going to get to a point where we're comparing applications and i have to compare this you know we as a group approved last night the bananas application which you know that business has no adversity because they started they bought it during the pandemic they that entity was not in existence in 2019. And I just pulled up that particular application that we approved last night. It indicates that they were donating, giving away product during the pandemic. I mean, instead of selling it. So I compare that to this and I can recognize that, you know, they had to go out and get PPE, something that they had anticipated. They didn't budget for it at the beginning of the year. Who, who knew? Um, they had to buy additional infrastructure, you know, um, you know, desks, chairs, and that kind of stuff. You know, that being said, when I scored it, it just made it. I mean, I, I, I gave it the score, you know, came out at the lowest for passing area. So that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I felt the same way when we first started the application. I know that hair salons and restaurants got hit. Um, I looked and I, she was only requesting the 10,000, um, so I thought that was humbling. And, you know, I scored it and gave them a lower because it was for me. Chris? I'm torn on this. I did. Very torn on this one. Um, you know, I'm still very much on the fence and appreciate the feedback that everybody's giving. That's what it's been doing. Um, going through the 10,000, it, it, it just to me seems like it's a legitimate ask. I'm not asking for a penny more, I'm not asking for a little less. This is what I was out. I did take a hit during 2020, and that clearly demonstrates it's still a significant need for center. So, you know, it is significant the fact that they have not um, reduced staff well, you know, as part of this is, is what we had to look for. So. Yeah, so um, you're right. I, I, the same thing. I struggled with this too. I, I passed it, but just barely. I think of also um, as someone who had to enforce the sector rules when the sector rules were in place. Um, this particular, you know, uh, group that hit hard. I mean, we were we were going out to measure. You know, you had to be. X feet away from each other, you can only have 50% occupancy. So on top of that, put it as a school, that's doubly tough for a business. So I mean, in the request, like every, like others have said, you know, $10,000, I mean, it seems very reasonable. They're not coming in here going, I want 25,000 and without the documentation. That's the other thing too, what I struggled with, why I just barely passed it was, they're only asking for 10, but at the same time, it would have been nice to have a clearer explanation of the 10. Because they just say, you know, you know, for example, uh, cost of PPP, um, additional chairs, desk. Great, it would be great to see some receipts that went along with that. So, but I, like I said, I'm passing it just barely. Yes, um, I, I, I too, um, I have a, a low pass on this one. I, I, uh, I agree with uh, Mike that the. Um, it would have been nice for there to have been a little bit of an estimate in terms of the material they were looking for or even receipts of what they had to purchase. But I, you know, this is, you know, for one, they're not asking for the full amount. And I and I respect that. The other part is that, you know, this is a uh, this is a business that managed to stay open and and one of the industries that was really hit hard by the whole pandemic itself. The fact that they are a teaching, a place of teaching. Um, you know, that also sort of factored in for it uh, to me as well. Um, so, you know, I would have, I would have liked to have seen, for me, the first question, the 30 point question was a little bit harder to score for me because uh, while I knew a lot that in the application itself, it did not directly provide it other than the, um, you know, the, the financial piece, but, you know, the, there could have been more in the narrative perhaps for me, but yeah, that's sort of where I'm at. Rob Fitz just joined us. Rob Fitz just signed in. Oh, okay. Um, Rob Burnett, 
Hold on one second. We'll, we'll finish going around the yep. table. Yep. yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I apologize for the delay in my late entrance. Rob, um, let me bring you up to date. And the record should reflect that at this particular point in time when Rob first joined uh, so the remote. Did you on this application uh, want to weigh in or did you come in too late? What's your no, I, I'm coming in a little too late. So if you don't mind, I'll just uh, listen in on this particular application. I can hear it on my end. He's, he's just he listening. said he's just going to listen on this one. He came in too late. Okay. Okay. Amy, I think we're up to you. So my difficulty with this is um, that it's not a forward looking project. Um, my understanding was that the project should um, just be retention, retiring of employees, recruitment. Capital building or certain improvements on paper and um, because as you said in your introduction, the money goes as a reimbursement, um, not as a forward looking project. And we've seen other examples of businesses that did experience a loss, but then are looking to get that money to attend to more expand the business, um, thing like that. So, um, and without documentation or receipts for what they're looking to. To um, do the money that was also difficult for me. Um, and the financial adversity was described, but it doesn't seem like it's so um, big financial hardship right now. Um, maybe that's reflected in the fact that they asked for less than 25000 in the cash. So um, I had some, so because of that, I had some issues. We started with you, right? Um, yes, add more if you need to. If not, we we'll uh, okay. um, the not losing staff or not reducing staff, I think, is the utilization of the PPP right. dollars that they got. So, you know, the intent of that was to keep the economic engine running. These people couldn't work, essentially. So that enabled the business to be able to pay their employees not have to lay them off. So I think that answers that question. You know, once again, I, I it's it's a low score, but I just passed it. Um I'll, I'll go next because I started. I I was listening carefully to everyone to see who was going to address the issue of financial hardship or financial adversity and see what they're going to say to see if they could talk me out of my low score. And I heard other things. But I didn't hear much about why a, uh, a business making this much money is experiencing a current financial hardship. I didn't hear it in your comments, um, which I thought was interesting. Senator, Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, Carl and Miss Samuel at the table right now. I spreadsheet it and wrote it down. Oh, got you. But yeah, that's what I can't even find it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't they're silly videos. <laughs> it's okay. You can admit this. Reynolds, 70. Bradinsky, 28. How you doing? Fish line 70, Wigan 75, Lydon 70, Jackie Anthony 75, and Gross 60. No, 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 Fifty-two point 
Uh, the, the record should reflect, and I'm sure it does, and, but I'm also asking people to remind me that um, uh, Rob Fritz is back in the mix and the attendance is uh, full, but on the vote of Academy, the Capitol and Barons, uh, we had fewer members present, so the vote could be different. Um, and we'll address that on, on a final motion to make sure we have enough votes. Probably just confused you. Let's move, move along to um, Lumen Estimates. This is a um, small owner operated. Uh, a business that um, is sort of off the beaten path of both physically, it's a back of Archie Moore. Um, but it's a, it's a woman who is struggling to establish a, a business in products that are, she describes as follows, a line of flower essences, gem essences, aromatherapy sprays and roll-ons, sourcing and pack packaging organic essential oils, as well as carrier oils, lotions and scrubs under her label. Um, she has, um, the application says, in the current location, four years off and on in various incarnations and capacities, um, She's had no uh, full-time employees other than herself from, uh, from January 2019 to the present time. She describes the the impact the pandemic had um, in some detail at the bottom of the first page, and she has certainly had her trials and tribulations as a result of, of COVID, and um, without a financial cushion to, to buffer uh, those. And she has asked for $25,000, not well documented, but broken out into five different categories, the largest being employees for $15,000 in the book production and sales. Um, Based on the information we have, we got tax returns, so that part of things is is documented. Um, based on the financials, um, the business had a loss in 2019, in 2020, a loss functionally the same as the two, year 2019, and in 2021, another loss, but less. Um, this is a struggling business that would love to, to get over the hump and, and get productive and become um, successful. And that is certainly appearing to be a challenge. Um, I am somewhat sympathetic um, to, to the effort. I do have a problem though with the proportionality end of things, um, looking for $25,000, which is um, more than the business you know, ever made, um, as far as I can tell, based on the limited financials. However, um, if it was reduced, and we can do this, um, the town council and its charge to us says it's our mission to determine whether or not someone should get a grant, in our opinion, and how much. So there's no question that we can reduce a grant. But I as we go around the table, if as a as a courtesy, you would address what would how would you feel about this application if it was reduced to around the eight thousand dollar level down from twenty five? Would uh, would that make any difference whatsoever? And that'll help me clarify my thoughts. So, um, I think that's subject to my second bite of the apple. That's all I have for now. We're gonna, we, we'll go around, we'll have your shot. Let's, yeah, I just uh, haven't started. Do you wanna go first? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, why don't you go first? I did um, not go first. Yeah, no problem. Um, 
So addressing that question first, yeah. you know, I'm sympathetic, but there's no evidence that the individual can operate a business. Um, so I'm concerned that even if it was $2,000, it's not going to be put to good use. I mean, it seems like the business plan here is to take a, a failing business, maintain a failing business, and open up another business. So, I, you know, I, I don't want to judge, but, you know, if you're going to enhance the current business, that's one thing, but I just don't get the business plan. So it was a failing business before the pandemic. It's a failing business after the pandemic. The twenty-five thousand dollars, the proportionality thing, just throws the application itself outside of consideration. But I can't, in good faith, approve anything here. So that's it. I I concur with Greg on this. I, I scored poorly on this. I I didn't see any specifics um in terms of and, and completeness in my mind um you had you had this loss the you know the gross income increasing and loss being very consistent it does seem like to be a a, a not an unsuccessful business venture and, and a, a lesser amount to me would be indifferent Jacqueline um I agree as well yeah I agree with that She's been in business four years, so we're still in our startup stages of the business. However, it doesn't show that it's a sustainable business. And um, and I feel bad for we were in business, so I I look at four years well. So part of a startup, it's not really part of a startup, um, which I don't think is the charter. Uh, that we set up for the, the dollar amount. Um, while significant to this business, whether it would be 25 or 5 or 10, it doesn't really make a difference. I don't think it passes the test. Mike? Yeah, the, the ship's sinking. I think that doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So I, I don't support it and support it very well. Jesse? Um, yeah, I. Pretty much echo what everyone said. I, I, I appreciated that there was a little bit more budget information and attachment, but it was sort of an expansion of the budget justification section. It speaks of multiple locations. You don't know if the money is there for the existing location or the location within that location. Um, to your point about reducing the amount of money, um, I don't know if that would change my opinion of it. Um, and you know, I, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, Rob, are you available to weigh in? Dropped off. You dropped off. What happened? You lost the husband. Okay. <clears throat> Amy? Um, I respect this entrepreneur's, um, Stick-to-itiveness, and this seems like a person who could benefit from from entrepreneurial business coaching. Um, I know that sometimes have that as part of the wins of the kind of part of the um, of the grants, but uh, we're not. So uh, I also believe that without additional um, coaching or mentoring, that a reduced grant would probably not be um, effective. So uh, I had you know, difficulties with the, the proportionality and the business model um, and lack of documentation. So I had issues with this application also. Well, uh, that's what everybody else has, except I also have a couple of them. One of these is, um, you know, I don't care what the business is, they can cut it off and so forth. That makes no difference for the size of the business or the amount of money they get, as long as they hit the mold. But what I do have a problem with on this one is, and if he has it up there, somebody has it up there, if you look at her tax return and you go to line E, she blacked it out. That's her address. You go to Concord and it mentions that she had moved around. She was in Cheshire for a couple of years. She wasn't in Wallingford. 
So I don't know how that affects it, but I don't like when somebody crosses off their address to try and go around their rule because I've seen people cut off their social security numbers and that's what they should do. I hate to see social security numbers on any of these forms because they're public, but um, to take off the address, and I think, I don't know if we're gonna see this again, because I have looked at them all, but these are things that bothered me and that bothered me on this application that they did that in there. And I have the concourse here. She was listed at business address, 689 Yieldsville Road, Cheshire, Connecticut. So, and she was living at that address. So she's working out of her home as she's doing now. And then moving into 33 North Banks. So just something I think we really should pay attention to on this no, application. These details are great to bring up, and that's why we're going around the table. So for different that, people I, see I, different I, things, and for that I shall share them and we're all well, become aware. So uh, we have uh, anyone up for a second bite or are you ready to score? Craig quickly go around send anyone a second bite or just you know, just how do we Rob's not on the call, so we just dealt with what we not have. Gonna okay. Yeah. Sure okay. Okay. He's still not on the call, correct? No, no. Yes. Okay, we lost him. Okay, uh, let's uh, put in the score sheets and follow the procedure. Gross 35, fish pine 20, walls 50, Reynolds 60, um, Regan 23, Carl 55, Jackie McAmey 50. Lidden 45 and Radinsky 55. Forty-three point six seven. Um so it's Seven thirty-four. Obviously, I didn't load up the agenda uh, enough. Um, I think we have two choices. Um, we can adjourn, um, spelled with a U, uh, or we can um, amend the agenda by an adequate vote and take up the issue that I put on the agenda for tomorrow, and that is the issue about incomplete applications, and we could, if we wanted, spend a half an hour, 25 minutes on that. I think the agenda for tomorrow is actually longer. Um, it's the first time we're going to do some nonprofits, so that may be involved. If it turned out, the applications we did tonight were fairly straightforward. It wouldn't take a lot of discussion. And, um, so I just, we're going to have to or need to address the issue of incomplete application sooner or later. We may want to do it tonight. I just want to hear your that discussion. We may be able to finish before eight o'clock. Um, we may not. I, I don't know. Yeah, I just have a hard stop at eight. I will pick up a child. Yeah. So um, I'm glad to start the conversation, but maybe first, Mike, um, make a motion to authorize the chair yeah, thank you. to send a favorable recommendation. How's that instead for Brown's Kempo Karate? Ah. And well, to report, so let me re, let me rephrase that for you. Uh, make a motion to authorize the chairman to send a favorable recommendation for Baran's Kempo Karate application, and then to send a I guess it would be negative report on Archie Moore's restaurant, Acad Academy Academy de Capelli, and Bio Bioin S S. Sorry, I'm going. Second. Hold on. Yeah. Um, I, I just got to think of one thing. We have some recusals on some of these. And so um, <laughs> it may be. Yeah, and you know what? That's a good point. The only one that we're approving is the one I recused on. So I'm actually withdrawing my motion. But if someone wants to, or maybe I think, <laughs> Carl, would this be okay? I, I'll, I'll make a motion to send a negative referral on the Archie Moore's academic and the, the three of them. Can I? And, and hold on, I didn't hear the and, and yeah. Archie Moore's and the three we've denied. The three we've denied. I'm gonna just amend denied. my motion to remove the positive. I'll let someone else. Mm -hmm. Craig, so there. I I just don't like the, the the tenor of the motion. With all due respect, I, I think it was more appropriate that we um, recommend that a grant not be approved for certain applicants. Okay, so no, no, okay. I, I don't want, you know, it's not a I, 
Yeah. Okay. Then, then maybe that's just, I that, that's, that's the standard. Is that what we did last night? Yes. Something said, like that. I just, yeah. I start to take a minute. I'm going to hate. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. So, as I think the motion is, I'm going to try to restate it, uh, that we vote to not recommend the following applicants, and then we're going to list them. That's correct. That's Hold correct. On um, because there's recusals, um, I think what I want to do is a roll call, and when if you've recused and it comes to you on the roll call, say recuse and then we can handle it that way it's a little more tedious but i, I my mind is a little scrambled if we try you to want to you want to break it out then the two that we have that no one, entire... one, at, one at a time i i, I think okay um, i'm sorry to, no uh, it's okay so um, i'll do the first three so, so the not recommend this is the not recommend motion right and we're starting with archie moore's are you in favor, Carl? We're going alphabetically, actually. Sure. Are you in favor of not well, recommending? No, it's just Archie Moore. We're choosing from Archie. You're, I'm not, no, 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 sorry. Not. Are you in favor of not recommending Archie Moore? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mike Berdinsky is a yes. Craig Fishbein. Yeah. Is it yes at all? I mean, Rob Fritz is uh, no. absent. Uh, Mike Glidden is a yes. Is a yes. Bob Gross yeah. is a yes. Jacqueline yeah. is a yes. Chris Regan yes. is a yes. Jesse Reynolds yeah. is a yes. And Amy Walsh is, yeah. is a yes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that motion carries. Yeah. Okay, so a similar motion, a motion to not recommend the application of Academy to Capital. Because I so many colleagues. I just want to be able to support you on that. Thank you. Can we just, can we have like a, a script and we're just going to fill it in? So can we make a recommendation to the town council that it not approve or it deny the grant application submitted by Academy Did I say something different just now? It, it was slightly different. Slightly different. Slightly different. I'm going to stay with my version. Okay. Uh, this so, got okay. so uh, Sherilyn, are you clear on what the motion is? So it's a, a, a motion to not motion recommend. To not recommend the following applicants. Yeah, not and the next. Archie Moore's. And the next one is to Capitol. Are we going to say Capitol to Town Council or just. Yeah, it's a, to the, it's going to be to um, the law department. It's going to be to the law department, uh, the mayor's office, and the town council. That's the report. So it's a roll call. Carl, you've recused, yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mike, I'm in favor of the motion. That's a yes. Craig Fishbein? Well, well that, that's an interesting question because how it's scored is the score. I of course. Don't, I that's don't why agree. you have to vote yes. Well, then why ask, right? Because we need something for the record to tidy it up. And all I'm asking for is your cooperation to vote in accordance with your scoring. That's I'm disappointed that that one. So if I vote no, I... then we don't have a grand bargain anymore, and it's back to the uh, it's back to the wild west. Okay. We so why not ju why not just enter if that's going to be the I mean why why have the vote at all why not just you know, you enter it because of the score, and why do we? I'm not being argumentative. Sure I'm just are. saying, sure no, I'm not at all. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not happy with that result. Um, I'm not happy with, you know, but it is what it is, right? So if I don't have a choice because I was scored and how we decided, is that a yes? I take that. Sure. Thank you. Craig Fishbein, yes. Uh, Rob Kurtz is absent. Yes. Mike Lydon is yes. Bob Gross? Yes. Yes. Jacqueline McNamara? Yes. That's a yes. Chris Regan? Yes. That's a yes. Jesse Reynolds is a yes. 
And Amy Walsh. Yes. The, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that passes. So are we going to? Yeah, Sharon, I'm, I'm just uh -huh. waiting for you to catch up. Are you ready for you all set? Uh -huh. oh, I have a question. So yeah. if we do 20 of these and somebody recuses himself from every single one, on all 20, we're going to have to go through every one of them until I it, until I figure something out overnight okay. that, that that streamlines it because it potentially could be different votes depending on how many are. Well, but if we all agree that the score, yeah, but we but there's a certain minimum amount of votes we need. You're you're probably right, and at the end of the day, I'm probably going to agree with you. Yeah, but I want to just knock these two off, and then we sure, can figure out what sure. we're going to do. All right. All right. So the next one is bioluminescence. So um, the, the motion is to re, to report to the government that the committee keeps themselves. So we already did it, right? Yeah. So it takes longer to debate it than it is to the roll call. Do you understand how that how that minute that works out? So I, I entertain a motion the committee not recommend the application of bioluminescence. So moved. And it's uh, moved and seconded by me. Uh, Carl, are you in favor of that motion to not recommend bioluminescence? Yes. Yes. Mike Bradinsky is yes. Craig Fishbein is I guess yes. So. Rob Fritz is absent. Mike Whitten is yes. yes. Bob Gross yes. is yes. And Jacqueline McNamee is yes. Chris Regan is yes. Yes. Jesse Reynolds is yes. And Amy Walsh is yes. Yeah. Right. Did I get that? Okay. And then Barron's. Who recused? Mike Glidden recused. Same motion to no. Well, the motion is to recommend uh, to government to approve the application so of Baron's Kempo Karate. So I second that. It's a motion to recommend. Baron's Kempo Karate. Carl? Yes. Yes. Mike Berdinsky? Yes. Craig Fishbein? Yes. yes. Rob Fritz? Absence. Bob Gross? Yes. Yes. Jacqueline McNamee? Yes. Yes. Chris Regan? Yes. Yes. Jesse Reynolds? Yes. Amy Walsh? Yes. Okay. Thank you for your patience, everybody. The, my interest in keeping a clean record if someone is absent, it should show. If someone is refusing, it should show. I mean, it, 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 it's just um, good protocol. It is now uh, four to eight. Yeah, Jesse. So we've already turned in some envelopes here, but in, in, the, in the spirit of that, if we submit all of our applications and then right on the outside, there's a few. And then if we just back submit them, these ones we approve, these ones we don't, there aren't all the details necessarily there. If we put on the envelope who, who recuse and who's who's absent, um, I'm not sure I heard you clearly, but we still need a motion that shows that we've adopted and approved whatever resolution. Right. No, no, no. I'm, not, and I, yeah. I'm just saying if we if we document who, who voted by what's in there, right. and on the outside of the envelope, we write who's recused, if when then we just say, these ones we recommend, these ones we do not recommend. All right. Doesn't um, that work? Yeah, maybe so. We'll, the next time we do this, we'll, I'll see if I can streamline it. But I, I, want, I would prefer the minutes to be as clear as possible. So I would, if I was reviewing the minutes of what we just did, mm -hmm. I would want to see approve a grant in the amount of $25,000 to parents, you know, there's a, you know, because then that's going to appear in the minute. To have somebody have to chase down the envelope to figure out, you know, open up the application. How much was it? Who was there? All that stuff. Okay. Way too much work. So okay. Openness and transparency. Well, yeah, sure. hold, hold on. I, I think that's a good suggestion. So next time around, I mean, the application is um, the application is for what it is. So uh, that speaks to this. Um, so the next time around, there's two two possible. We'll fix that by putting in the amount. Sure. Or um, that you can just um, authorize me in the report to add in the amounts and uh, 
and we'll do it that way. In other words, we voted to, and, and the minutes would so be, Carolyn, the minutes would reflect that sort of amendment. Okay. Yeah. But we, we can agree to do that uh, by acclamation and just add in the amount of the grant to the motion we just made and passed. Wait, okay. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sort of new to this, but if we just said when we scored it, the score and what the amount was for, wouldn't that make it into the minutes? No, we don't need that. That's more than the, they just want to know that we approve or we don't approve. Do we approve and no, what amount? To your point about the minutes and chasing down envelopes, if at the time when we announced the score, I would imagine that's in the minutes. No, I mean, the review of the minute, if the motion is clear, it doesn't matter the score. Right. Yeah. So we've scored it. It's come back to us. I make a motion to approve the grant and the amount of this for this entity. Okay. The scoring has absolutely nothing to do with that because we've already decided amongst ourselves as long as it, it reaches to a certain the more, the more we debate this and spend time on it, yeah, what we're going to do the next time is after each application, we're going to take a vote, name the amount, and and vote that way, and, and rather than around the vote. Well, and and it's, it's getting okay. to the, we yeah, spend more time, time on this than we need. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Okay. We're motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Uh, anyone opposed to that? So we are adjourned. Mm -hmm.